Hey guys, it's Brogan and welcome back to my channel. So I'm so excited for today's video because I'm gonna be showing you guys how I get some really good quality Instagram uh, photos by myself in the comfort of my own home using a couple of things I have lying around the house. Um, I think these tips are going to be super handy if you're looking to up the quality of your Instagram in general. Um, not everyone needs fancy photographer friends that follow them around to take photos. Sometimes you just got to do it yourself. So um, yeah, I'm going to be showing you guys the setup I use as well as the things and equipment I use and just some tips and tricks on editing and the apps I use towards the end of the video. So if you guys are interested in how I get my higher quality Instagram photos, then please keep watching. So I actually just shoot in front of a blank white wall in my room. <laughs> it's not anything fancy. Um, I just find that blank white walls work the best when you want to take really good quality photos because you can really focus on the detailing of your face or your outfit or whatever you're taking photos of. Um, so yeah, this is literally just in my room. And sometimes I will take it in front of the blue wall in the other room next to mine. So any basically blank walls work really, really well. So for lighting, I'm not really fancy. I don't own a ring light. I just try open all the windows in my room to get as much natural lighting as possible. Unfortunately, it is kind of overcast today, so it is a bit dark in my room. Otherwise, the camera I use, which is the one I'm filming with currently, does have a flash that I will also use if I feel it needs that, but mostly I just work on natural lighting. So basically I'll either take uh, photos on this chair, which is just this really tiny chair I own from when I was small, um, or I'll just literally sit on the floor. And this here is my baby. So this is my tripod and I use it to take all my photos basically because it's just really handy to have a tripod if you want to take level photos um, of the camera to your height, if that makes sense. Um, but I haven't always had a tripod for a long time. I actually just kind of had to make do with whatever I had lying around the house. So say I'd stack like a bunch of books up till this height or I'd get a chair and stack stuff on a chair and then balance my camera on that. So it's really all about being creative as I said earlier. So if you guys don't have a tripod, you can always make another plan by just balancing it on like a shelf or your bed or getting someone to do it for you. So so the camera I shoot with most of the time is this, and this is a Sony Alpha 5000. Um, uh, this is just the camera I use for everything, for vlogging, for photos, and I really like it because it has a flip screen, which means when I'm taking photos on self-timer, I am able to see exactly how I'm posing and what it looks like which is really handy, but as I said, if you don't have a professional camera to take photos on, or if you can't lend one from someone, I also use my iPhone. And basically, I will just stand my iPhone on a stand like this and put it on front mode, actually, because then it's basically the same as a flip screen. You can see exactly what you're doing, and the quality on iPhones these days, especially on uh, front camera, they are so good, it's pretty much the same as using a professional camera, if I have to be so honest. So I'll either use these two depending on what I'm feeling like, um, so yeah, I don't really have a preference here. So when shooting on my camera, I will just use it on a superior auto mode. Um, if need be, I will adjust, say, the brightness or the warmth and yeah, that's basically all I do. And I just use this to get into shot. Yeah, and then I'll just flip it up, put self timer on 10 seconds and basically just run and take a photo when I'm done. So another quick and easy hack <laughs> that I think is so cool. As I said, I prefer white walls just because they can be so easily manipulated. Um, you can add lighting, you can add a background. Um, so something that I enjoy doing is I actually just take my bedside lamp, <laughs> which is this. I know this is really DIY, but just bear with me. So I'll switch it on. Uh, and as you can see, it already creates like kind of a warm cast which definitely shows up more in photos. But if I really want to be creative, I actually just paint <laughs> paint on a plastic sleeve, uh, whatever color I want, and then I tape it in front of my light and it gives a pink cast to the photos. So um, that is another really, really DIY cheap hack for some cool photos. If you guys want to change the color of your background, um, this works really well, especially at nighttime, obviously when everything's a bit darker and this light is the focal point, but yeah. 
So just to show you guys uh, an example of how I take photos, I'm just going to do a little quick photo session for you guys. So I am just wearing this leopard print coat from a surprise, this really beautiful sparkly top from Supra. And for my makeup, I usually do like the same look when I'm taking photos and it's just like quite a thick cat eye, warm smoky eye and then really natural skin with maybe a glossy lip or something like that. Um, so yeah, I'll show you guys how I do it right now. So yeah, that is basically <laughs> the process that happens behind taking the photos. A lot of it goes into editing simply because you can be so creative with the way you edit these days because editing apps are like so advanced. I'm just going to quickly show you guys how I edit some photos. Um, what I'll do after I've taken them on my professional camera, I will then just uh, sync it onto my iPhone so I can now edit on my iPhone. Okay, so usually what I'll do is I'll open Facetune. Um, I know Facetune you have to pay for, but honestly, it's so worth the money for me. It just gives photos such a professional quality. And usually I will go in and just smooth out parts of my face that maybe are bothering me. Um, if I have any kind of roughness on my skin, I'll just go smooth that out. And I'll also put some detailing, say, on my eyes, my eyebrows, my nose. And my lips and if I'm wearing like any kind of jewelry or accessories I'll also detail that um, I usually then just go to filters and um, another cool thing that maybe a lot of people don't know how to do is if you go to lens on um, filters in Facetune there's one called chromatic which gives that cool like 3d effect that a lot of people use um, I really like that um, I don't really have a specific style of editing on Visco I just kind of play around with whatever filters I find are gonna be the best for the photo that I've just taken but I don't tend to over edit on Visco just because I like to still have um, a little bit of naturalness to the photos like I had just taken them just like that I hadn't really put a filter on top um, and I'm also a big fan of sharpening my photos and um, adding some grain just because it kind of gives in that film effect which is really cool and super in at the moment so if you guys are interested in doing that then I would do that also cropping is your best friend like as you guys can see I have stuff hanging like on the walls and I have a shelf like right here so basically what I do I'll just crop myself so it's just this part of me if that makes any sense like it's just me and the white wall behind me another app I really like is Filmborn just because it's all about like film editing so I might also go and use that and it kind of comes with set filters like Visco and you can kind of play around within the brightening um, and the whole shindig. <laughs> Alright guys, so that is all for today's video. I hope I at least helped some of you in some way um, and given you some ideas on how to take really nice high quality photos of yourself. So anyone can do this, it just takes a little bit of inventiveness and creativity as I said in the beginning of the video and you yourself can have some really bomb ass Instagram photos. So yeah, I'll see you guys in next week's video. Thank you so much for watching, I will see you soon and don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't. Bye guys. <laughs>